Hi guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about bass drum spurs. So, it's sort of an overlooked topic sometimes, and a lot of people have a bunch of trouble with their bass drums moving around while they're playing them. And I really have never had this problem once I learned a few, like, sort of key tips on uh, how to keep it from moving around. Uh, you know, the only time I ever had a problem when I was a little kid and I didn't really know what was going on. So, uh, once you get a little info, you should be good to go too. I know this is a weird shot, but my first tip is carpet. You must have some type of carpet. It can be remnant carpet from like installing some in your house or a friend's house or find it in a dumpster, who cares? Um, but something that, that uh, your bass drum can grip into is essential. If you are trying to play on a tiled surface, a wood floor, uh, linoleum, you're going to have a bad time. So just straight up, don't try it. Just get some carpet. So we're talking about spur placement next. So here I am perpendicular to the resonant head of my bass drum, you know, lined up basically exactly 90 degrees off from the way that it's facing. And you can see the foot of my spur uh, lines up with the front of my bass drum hoop. And that is on purpose. I always found that that works pretty well if you're at least close to that type of thing. If you're straighter up and down or if you're wider out, it doesn't quite grip in as well. Okay, so if we just look at how the spur is mounted, you'll see that on this one, which is a premier bass drum, uh, there's a little stop here and a channel. Uh, and so you can fold this up, and so this uh, spur will rotate back, but it will not rotate any farther forward. This is the end of its range of travel. And I think because this lines up nicely with what I perceive to be the best sort of spur foot placement, uh, the fact that it stops here with a hard stop, um, it means that this is what Premier also thinks is the correct angle to have your spur at. So I tend to agree with them. This is not specific to Premier. I've seen pearl bass drum spur mounts that have this, Tama sometimes have this. Uh, it's a pretty common feature to have sort of a channel or mark or indication of where they think it should go to, and it's usually pretty close to what I would do anyway. Here we are looking from the ground underneath the front hoop, and you'll see that there's a lot of air. You can see light right on through to the other side. Uh, and this means my bass drum is absolutely not actually touching the ground uh, in any way. The shell does not contact the ground ever. It looks like bass drums are sort of laying on the floor, but a, a good placed bass drum that's set up correctly is not touching the floor, uh, except for at the spurs, right? The spur is obviously touching the floor, but the uh, batter side hoop is actually resting on the pedal. It's kind of hard to see that, but of course, you hook it into the pedal, so it's resting on a portion of the pedal uh, clamping mechanism. And then the front end is in the air, and only the spurs touch the ground. So this gives you, of course, more resonance, because it's up in the air, um, if you cared about that. But also, it's making sure that all the weight is on the spurs. There is no weight uh, on the hoops, or on the shell, or on the lugs, or you know any other component of the drum that could be causing it to slide around. The weight is all on the spurs, which are intended to keep it still. Now, why are they called spurs, you might wonder, if you don't already know. And it's because there is literally a spike down here. This metal spike is the key to this whole thing working. Uh, it's what grabs into the carpet. You see it disappears down there when I put it down. And it digs its way in, and it's at such an angle that the harder you play, the harder it digs in and keeps your bass drum from moving. So if you uh, don't extend those spikes out of their rubber housing here, you're not getting that benefit. Now, of course, this is adjustable. There's a sort of a set uh, nut here, um, which I can't undo at the moment. It's really tight. But you can back that off. You can change uh, just by threading this up or down how far out the spur sticks. Um, but if you're just using this sort of rubber foot here, your bass drum is liable to just wander off almost immediately. That's not really how they're supposed to work. So to recap, uh, play on carpet, never on a hard surface. Put your spurs out so that they line up roughly with the front edge of the resonant hoop. Um, and this will be the same usually as the angle indicated or sort of mandated by the spur adjustment at the mounting point. Uh, Keep your um, front hoop off the ground so that the, the bass drum is basically a tripod. Two spurs and the part that's clamped into the pedal extend the spike of the spur and uh, make sure that it is gripping into the aforementioned carpet. And if you do these things, your bass drum, it won't leave. 
you'll be fine. Um, I play quite loud. I play thrash and death metal a lot of the time. And I play a lot of double bass. And so anyone who tells me, well, I just play too hard, I need to put a brick or bolt my kick to the floor or buy some kind of weird extra product, uh, you, you don't play harder than I do. You don't play more bass drum than I do. That's, you, I mean, you're probably breaking a lot of kick hits if you're playing harder than I do. So it's really about just setting it up at the appropriate angle and the appropriate sort of uh, adjustments to get the thing to work the way it was designed to work. Now there are exceptions to this. This is for modern gear. We'll talk about an exception real quick. This is the exception. If you have um, low end or vintage spurs on your bass drum that look sort of like this, then everything I've said isn't going to work because you can't do any of those things. This doesn't have a spike on the end. It doesn't stick out forwards towards the front hoop. Um, and it actually does almost nothing except prevent the drum from rolling over on its side. So if you have a vintage kit or a low end kit that has spurs like this that just uh, telescope in and out of the shell and you can't change the angle and they don't actually have uh, a gripping spike at the bottom, then okay, you are the kind of people who really need some sort of extra help. You're going to need to buy some sort of hoop mounted claws or uh, get a, a drum rug with like a backstop built into it or something because this really won't work. This is technology that has been eclipsed, it's outdated, and it's not very good. Okay, here we're looking at the bottom of a bass drum pedal and you can see there are two spikes right here. This one and this one. These screw down into the carpet from above um, and they help hold the pedal in place, which if you have it clamped in correctly onto your bass drum hoop also keeps the bass drum in place. So if you have one of those exception bass drums where the spurs are not designed sort of in the modern correct way to hold your bass drum still, this type of pedal can really help you because these will grip in and keep your pedal from leaving. Uh, you can also buy a thing uh, that attaches to the hoop on the resonant side. It's like the same two spikes and uh, they clamp to the hoop just like this, there's just no pedal attached. So that is one option if you have like a vintage bass drum that just doesn't have any of the features I've mentioned. Okay, so like I said in the beginning of the video, I haven't had this problem since I was a little kid with the bass drum scooting away from me. And if I think back to why that was happening, I was using a vintage Ludwig bass drum that had spurs that sort of went straight down. They did have spikes, but you couldn't like actively put them forward. And I think one of the spikes may have actually, or one of the spurs may have actually been broken. So I was working with extremely substandard equipment and that's why my bass drum was leaving. So if it's happening to you, if you're one of those people whose bass drum is, is habitually just wandering off, um, A, check if you have the right type of equipment for what I'm talking about, um, and B, make sure it's set up correctly and that should fix all your problems. And I guess uh, if you don't have that equipment and there's no way to set it up so that it works, that's when you look at either buying a new drum kit or uh, buying some of those auxiliary products uh, that are on the market to keep your vintage style or low-end style bass drum planted. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.